recording. So can we just do a quick round, like how is this uh, process uh, for you? Uh, Ingrid, can you, would you just maybe start the ball rolling? Uh, I started feeling anxiety seeing <laughs> Gary there. It was like, um, it was uh, bothering me a lot. I wanted to, I felt inside, I, uh, I wanted to relieve his anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted it to I wanted it to stop and um, there there is that uh, it's almost like having a mix between empathy circle plus discussion it's like you need both because um, if it's too much empathy it, it it can hinder some things that you can get in a discussion um, so that's um, but I I, I uh, enjoyed going through the process okay uh, Wayne just a quick I, I have a much better feel for what an empathy circle is. Um, I, I think it can be valuable. I'm not sure I'm a person who should be in uh, implementing an empathy circle, but uh, I, behind the scenes, I'm totally supportive of the effort. Okay, uh, Chris? So I, I think that had I been in the empathy circle with only people I didn't know, it's because with Wayne and Gary, I have such a tight feedback loop because I do interact with them uh, so much that, um, that typically it is a action reaction back and forth for our flow of our conversation. That if I was in a group of people that didn't know me on a day-to-day -day basis, that I'd probably while I was hearing the other person and before it was my turn, uh, I'd probably take the time to construct what it was that the story that I felt I needed to tell, uh, what, or what my thoughts were that I needed to get out there for someone else to hear what it was I was saying. So, but I could probably do that much easier around mm -hmm. a group of a hundred percent strangers than what it would be with two people that I closely work with on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, thanks, uh, Gary. 100% in agreement with that. Um, I, I, I did not think about that until Chris just brought it up. And I think that um, I, I, even though I believe very strongly in my, in what I thought was my ability to be empathetic, I realize that I'm truly not, and that the it would be interesting for me in order to see how I would behave doing empathy circle again with total strangers, because I feel that I need that perspective in order to be able to have some breath of my understanding of empathy circle and even now my even now my um my commentary on not being an empathetic person because I, I i i truly do believe that i'm not and i agree with ingrid i seek discussion along with the empathy circle in order to get fulfillment and um I too believe, like Wayne said, that I'm not, I'm not a good candidate for this. I ne and I wouldn't have thought that I would have said that before this. Okay. Is there more? I feel like that's it. So um, the, the process, uh, it can be used in a wide variety of situations. Uh, this was kind of a new one uh, for, for me. I've done it in families with, it, and this is with people who are in deep conflict in a family, and it can, it's like, can be very powerful in that context. We also do it with political left and right, people who don't know each other, and it, it's quite powerful uh, in, in that context too. So it is something to be learned and kind of, you know, it, and it is very reproducible, so you can just Create a circle, you know, with your family, friends, do it on your own, and, and that's sort of one of the, the advantages of it. So um, it was, I feel the kind of the anxiety, but that kind of makes it richer. <laughs> 
it's like if it's all if it's all just kumbaya like you know the thing about the empathy circles is we're pulling up the rug you know from all the stuff that's under the rug and it it's not empathy is not kumbaya it is tough and it can get even tougher this this you know it can get pretty downright difficult uh, emotionally <laughs> But the container does create uh, some uh, safety in that you know you will be heard. So um, I feel good that we, we did this. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for everyone for uh, taking part.